singlets are screaming at me to come over and help him. Because I'm going to be in the water with a dead patient. I had to paddle over the crest of one or two more little waves, and then I just saw the person face down, just lifeless and face down. Across the railing, a guy screams out and says, Harry, there's a baby dead up on the road. Hey, boys, can someone back me up? There's a baby apparently not breathing over here in the car park. Where? Harry's has grabbed a defibrillator and oxygen kit. When I'm running up, the guy says the baby's just been laying there for a fair while. So, you know, I, I'm just trying to stay calm at this stage. I'm just trying to take deep breaths. If it is a baby, this is a, the most important thing ever. Survival of life for a child surpasses anything I've ever done in my career. You know it's serious because there's bystanders in the park just pointing that way, that way. Where we go? You know, you're preparing for the worst. And all of a sudden, I see this baby just on the road. The baby showed no signs of life. It was not breathing. <laughs> The baby has reportedly fallen on its head from a height, but it's unclear how. The patient is an eight-week-old boy. At this stage, the baby is clinically dead. His father can only watch on. The father was literally on top of me, and to be a father and look up at him and to see water coming out of his eyes, you know, a dad do a dad. You just want to give it your all. The baby's mother is unable to watch. Resuscitating a tiny baby presents major challenges. We go to pull the defib out and I see a baby that is so small that it stops me instantly. Lifeguards must urgently administer manual CPR. I did have an obstacle that there was a head trauma and a hip trauma that I just had to get breaths into that baby. Generally, I would have picked the baby up and gone for it. Lifeguards decide to ventilate the baby with a bag mask and oxygen. Harris was in there to quickly adapt our oxy kit down to an infant size. We've only ever done that in training. There's no time to think, it's just do. Uh, I knew that I had to get breaths back into that baby. All those rescues that I've done, nearly 6,000 rescues, over 70 resuscitations on these beaches of people that have been clinically dead. It comes down to this one moment. After the third breath of breathing that baby up, I started to see the rise and fall of the baby's chest. Oh my God, this is so, this is working, this is effective what I'm doing, giving these rescue breaths to the baby. But it's not out of the woods, it still had a massive trauma. Two critical minutes of care has brought the baby back to life when the paramedics arrive. The baby still needs assistance to breathe. The worst thing about with the baby is you want to hear them cry. You know, it's, it's actually concerning when there's no noise. We still didn't have that, that, that baby responding at that stage. After around the eighth, ninth breath, I hear the baby cry. To hear this baby scream was just the greatest moment ever. It was a miracle, really. It was a New Year's Day miracle, you know, and far out. Yeah, that's a, it's had 10 New Year's days down here, but to tell you what, that's one I'll never forget. To see the look on Harrison's face and to see the look on Beardy's face, this was real, this was raw, this is rare. A 
It doesn't matter if you're a battle-hardened soldier. It's going to affect you. You've got to bring out your A game. It's going to test you to your core. And there's so much going through my mind. Of course, like my two boys, like my world. And then there's a lot more that affects me that I lost my father like six months ago. All of a sudden, like I've got this baby, I've, I've lost someone that's elderly and I've got this baby in front of me. And, I, and I'm thinking I've lost my father, but here's my chance to have an infant to give this child a new life. Everything was that moment. But the baby may not be out of danger yet. A special casualty access team, known as SCAT, arrives to help assess any head trauma. An incredible seeing that chopper come in and just landed straight away on the golf course. On the toll chopper as well, they've actually got a doctor. All hands are on deck for this incident. Intensive care paramedics handed over to the SCAT team and they treat the baby. They loaded the little boy straight in to get him straight to the kids' hospital. A distressed man runs to the tower. Something is happening between the flags. Central Jazz here, can you go in the middle of the flags? Got a, someone waving middle of the flags. Copy, mate. Same thing, group of them. Middle of the main set now. Quick, get there. Um, do you want us to meet them on the shore? Yeah, mate, you're going to have to get there. <laughs> Chapo and Kalen are half a kilometre away at South End. Thanks for the start. Middle of the main set, blue jets, do you get there? Hard to tell yet, man, but uh, I think they've got someone on the back of the ski. Yeah, I think you get need a DQ, babe. I'm just going to keep going until you get this ready. To restart his heart, lifeguards may need a defibrillator. As well. Ambo being called, Ambo being called. Let's get the defib. No, Maybe we need someone to come up and get a defib. The defib is in the tower, but Dunno can't leave the control post unmanned. The defib is vital. Dunstan has no choice but to enlist a passing backpacker. Oi, guys, guys, can you do me a massive favour, man? Green shorts. Oi, man, you need to run this down. Oi, 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 buddy. Do us a massive favour, man. You need to run that down yes. to the other side of the flag. <laughs> See that flag, the flag down there? Someone's just drowned. Get down there. I need good, good. I, promise, I, need good. I promise, I promise, I promise. Get down there, man. Run, run. <laughs> oi, run. Run, man. <laughs> we need to get him up in the dry sand. I'll come in the third round now. Where's that deep in? We need it He's now been clinically dead for three minutes. 21, 22. Keep going, Chapo. Someone give Chapo a break. Yeah, I'll, go, I'll come in, I'll come in. Come on. Right. Let's go. Wait, wait, wait. Go. Right out. Let's go. Out of the way. 
It's now four minutes since the man was first discovered. No one knows how long he was under the water before then. It's critical that no one touches the man's body while it is shot. I know you can't touch him. Don't 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 touch him. You'll get electrocuted. Check airway. Someone Check in. breathing. If needed, begin CPR. Okay, Has he got a pulse? I've got a pulse. I have a pulse. Okay, you want to have a pulse? He's responding. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's breathe with him. Breathe with him. I've got a pulse, I've got a pulse. Breathe him up. Breathe him up. We've got a pulse. We've got a pulse. Yeah, no, we're going to breathe him up. He's all right, mate. We got him. We got him, mate. Keep breathing him up. Got a good pulse, Shaffer. It's all right. Continue. Let's just breathe him in, mate. Breathe him up. Thanks, mate. We're going to breathe him up. Just breathe with him. Go with his breath. Over there, Stonington. His name is Ryan Kim, 26, a student from Korea. Ready? Side on three. One, One two, two, three. See if we can clear his airway. Give him a better. See if he wants to bomb it. Yeah. Take the good airway now. Yeah. Okay. That's it. He's got a lot of fluid coming out. That's what we want to do. That's good. That's it. That's good. Let's just keep backing him up. He's got a good, good, yeah. Okay, there's good. There's a lot of fluid Let's coming out. That's good. Try back, back, and see if he can clear it out a little bit more. Do you think he might have hit his head on the bottom? No. Can he swim? No. I think he's coming around, but a bit more oxygen. Okay, he's getting a lot more colour in his face. Then, only minutes after being brought back to life. You're right, mate. You want hey, 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 stay still, stay still. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, buddy. You're right. It's okay. You're okay. You want to put him in recovery? Get the therapy mask. Yeah. Where's his gun? It's all right, mate. It's okay, buddy. You're okay. He's obviously in the past. still needs urgent medical care. Good. We've done a good job. We've done Close friend Dan is by his side. All right, mate. You're all right. Hey, guys. How are you going, mate? How long till we came to? Probably about maybe four sets of CPR. Four, yeah. four hours, five, maybe. Yeah, so they were CPR? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Precaution still needs to be taken in case of other injuries. Grabbing this spinal board so I can carry him off. Good work, Dano. <laughs> With water in his lungs, Ryan is still at risk of cardiac arrest and secondary drowning. Bondi's most dramatic resuscitation in recent memory. Classmate Dan breaks the news to friends. At St Vincent's emergency, Ryan is still in critical condition. Paramedics brief doctors. The lifeguards put a automated fibrillator on, they didn't shock him. As we're coming in, oh, yeah. pain. Dan is eager for news. Um, he was very, very badly hurt in the in the water. His lungs were full of water. So we have had to put a tube down his throat and a machine is ventilating him. In his stomach as well, a lot of water. About we had about half a litre of water in there. You want to see him? Yeah. He's very lucky, very lucky to be alive. CPR started straight away, and that's what was needed. Instant, early, effective CPR. And the government speech have saved his life. A week after Ryan Kim was brought back to life, Hoppo arrives. 
with a dead man walking. Uh, he's still unconscious. He still doesn't have a gag reflex. OK, so... Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, you look a little bit different. Do you want to watch this from the start? Yes? Yeah? OK. All right. Here you are. Hey, get him out of the water! 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 His name is Takahiro Ono, an English language student from Tokyo. No one knows what's happened to him or how long he's been in the water. Roy Mo, Roy Mo, no. Someone go and get on the uh, radio. There's a radio on my bike and call for the doof here. Check pulse. Hoppo can't detect a pulse. Bagging, corn. He's not breathing. Bagging, come on, come on. Thank you. Tucker is clinically dead. You grab the mask. The boys must get his heart beating again and air into his lungs. It's a male, about 20 years old. Uh, they got him on the bag now. I'll get back to him more. Yeah, okay. Everyone, I can't really feel it. Yeah, mate. Danny arrives with a defibrillator as Corey starts CPR. One, two, three, four, four, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Get a towel, get a towel. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Tucker still has no pulse. Stand clear. Stand clear. Watch out. Everyone, stand clear. Stick clear. Ready? The machine reads Tucker's vital signs. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. Check pulse. Give CPR. Check pulse. There's no pulse. Give CPR. I can't get one. Start CPR. Right right the deep trip doesn't work on Tucker Two, first time. Three, four, five, the machine five, needs time to recharge. Eight, Corey nine, continues CPR. 11, 12. The ambulance has been called. Paramedics are on the way. Just if you need anything else, give us the L. Yeah, copy that, Chapo. 13, 14, 15. It's four minutes since lifeguards got to Tucker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The machine needs time to establish whether he has any heart rhythm. Stand clear. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. Tucker's had two shocks. He's in spasm. Patients rarely survive if they need more than three shocks. Tucker's been clinically dead for at least four and a half minutes. He has one chance left. I've lost it. Stand clear. Stand clear. Stand clear. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. The third shock has finally had an effect. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. I won't shock again. Breathe, Still staying there. Stay clear. Stay clear. Analyzing rhythm. Breathing, yeah. It's all right, mate. It's all right. Pulse. There's no pulse. Give CPR. He's got a yeah. faint pulse. He's, He's breathing, mate. It's getting stronger. Take a good it's pulse. Strong. Take a good pulse here. Okay. He's been in the water and you swallowed a lot of water, okay? Stay. Just relax, mate. Just, just relax. relax. We're looking after you, okay? Understand? He's got a strong heartbeat now, strong heart. Just, Just keep your head there, mate. It's OK. He's giving you some oxygen. It's OK, right, it's OK. It's right, buddy. It's OK, mate. Just relax. Just take it easy. Good work, boys. All of his eight. Good work. Try deep breaths, mate. OK? As they wait for an ambulance, lifeguards try and piece together the events that almost killed Tucker. What, what happened to him? No, I, I, I ought to swim in the water. And you just 
that kind of floating or what? No one knows how long Tucker was clinically dead in the water. But for five minutes, the lifeguards kept him alive on the sand. Despite the trauma of a major medical emergency, Tucker knows who and where he is. What's your name? Takahiro. Takahiro, is it? Yeah. I know we are. Taka? Yeah. Where are you? Where? Bondi. He said Bondi. A shot of Maxilon will help stabilise Taka. Lifeguards and paramedics brace him on a spinal board. One, two, three, roll. They're concerned Taka may also be suffering a spinal injury. Perhaps he was violently knocked out in the surf. Was it, was it immersion related or...? We think so. He was found at the edge Can of the water. Can you feel me clutching your elbow? So you pulled him out of the water. Yeah. Have you used it on an arrest before? Oh, we used to. We had 12 last year. Did you? Yeah. Oh, they're unreal, these things. Unbelievable. Oh, it's, it's got to have someone behind it, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you blokes did all right? Tucker's alive, but the drama's far from over. How did he end up floating lifeless in the water? Has he damaged his spine? Will he suffer any brain damage from lack of oxygen? You happy to go on your own or do you want to...? Yeah, we'll be right thank you. See you later. Thanks, well mate. done, you Thanks. saved his life. You're yeah. great, you blacks. Thanks, Tucker's not out of danger yet. Now emergency doctors need to find out what caused his heart to stop beating. Okay, so you're going to feel a sharp scratch in a minute, OK? Do you remember what happened in the surf? Maybe. Tucker will soon learn he's got a long-term medical problem to deal with. Doctors have yet to work out exactly what happened to him. Is, he was just trying to tell me something then. This time he actually felt that when he was standing, he started to get a bit dizzy. In the surf? Surfing oh. before, when he was swimming, he started to get dizzy. He hasn't had any cardiac problem in the past, but he has had some um, arrhythmia in the past. He has been told that he has. Until now, everyone thought Taka had drowned. But a childhood heart condition could be a factor. At school, that when he actually had that um, generalised annual physical checkup, yeah, 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 they then said he it had... was picked up. Um... But he never was symptomatic. Oh, OK. Um... So I don't think that you've swallowed too much water. No, I don't think you were close to no, drowning. No. He needs to stay in hospital because his heart went into a, into a funny rhythm. Oh, OK. OK, so the cardiologist will need to look after him. But we're concerned that he may have had a problem with his heart. Heart. He's only 26, but Tucker may have suffered a heart attack in the water and could suffer another at any time. Five people have walked off the shallows of a sandbank into the deep water of Backpackers Rift. It didn't look good at all. As Singlet's heads out, Jethro notices something isn't right. Someone holding her up. Just hang on, guys. We've got the first coming out for you. So I couldn't see the patients on the way out. And then I remember coming over to the last wave and what I saw next just, you know, absolutely shocked me to the core. Shit. The woman is unconscious and not breathing. Singlets must let the team know. The situation is critical. Instead of three pumps, the first thing you got to do is, is get the deep fib. Yeah, give me down back to the deep fib. Well, you never want to see that signal because you know that you know you've got a heavy situation happening. Ambulance, please. Oh, wow, this girl's unconscious. The man and the woman are from the same family. Of course, I wanted to help Singer. He was asking for help, but I couldn't leave this guy that was clearly about to drown. So I had to paddle that guy in and then go help again. Hey, hey. Singlets are screaming at me to come over and help him. This lady's unconscious. And then I heard on the megaphone. Cause there's one out to the left here as well. Further out, the situation has become much worse. I had to paddle over the crest of one or two more little waves, and then I just saw person face down, just lifeless and face down. It's another, it's two unconscious patients out there. The 
look, I've seen some crazy things in my 19 years of, of service, and mate, that one was just, just unbelievable. To have two people unconscious at the same time, I've never seen that in my, my lifetime of being a lifeguard. Lady, hello. Chapo's not even working, Chapo's in there. Where we were, there was just constant little ways that just kept chipping away, like just making it harder and harder and harder. I just went straight for Corey, because he needed help. Zinglis is left with no assistance. I remember when the other lifeguards paddled to the other patients. You know, I just felt like, how am I going to manage this? Like, there's no one to help. It's been three minutes since the pair were found face down. The human brain cannot survive without oxygen for much longer than six minutes. If I lose my board... Come on, mate. Talk to me. Hello. Worst possible scenario. Because I'm going to be in the water with a dead patient. Hello, hello. Come on, come. I just thought to myself, I'm going to have to draw on every little bit of skill. Every little bit of training to get this woman in because there is really no other option. Anyone who's tried to pick up an unconscious patient is just pretty much sometimes impossible on your own. And, you know, for the job he did, it was just incredible. Pick up. Sideways, sideways, use the drone. This way, this way. Yeah. Four and a half minutes after Oddbjörg was first found, Singlets begins the vital compressions, which will circulate oxygen from her bloodstream through to her brain. Don't worry about that. Keep coming. Keep coming. One, two, three. Kerbox prepares the defibrillator. The voice system will notify lifeguards if an electric shock can be given to restart Oddbjörg's heart. One, two, three, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oddbjörg's sister watches on. They're out there, mate. They're still out there. Everyone knew, like, we've got to get him in as quick as possible. And as time went on, we're just thinking, got to get him in, got to get him in, got to get him in. Even with, like, three or four other guys trying to push the board when a wave came, the, the wave just wouldn't take us. Lifeguards must battle against the power of Backpacker's rip. Corey did that initial work, and he was just like, get him in, get him in, and we were like, we're trying. Almost six minutes have lapsed since Corey first reached Johnny. Five surfers have joined three lifeguards in the fight against the rip. Somehow he came off the board again. It just drove me insane that I couldn't get him in. Hopefully that ammo gets hit real quick. Lifeguards listen to the defibrillator. Continue for 15. Continue. But Oddbjerg's heart rhythm is in flatline and she can't be shocked. Stop CPR. Stop now. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. I remember looking around and went, oh, no. This has got to be the worst thing I've ever seen as a lifeguard. Good boy. Good boy. Now yeah, get that back in. The thing that was going through my brain more than anything was, like, this person's friends or family are going to be on the beach watching this whole thing. <laughs> Continue for one minute, 30. Seven minutes after Johnny was first found in the water, resuscitation begins. Compressions down, cause. Nothing coming out. Compressions, Compressions cause. Straight enough. Let go, mate. This is the worst crisis the service has faced in decades. No matter how long they've been unconscious for, you know, you, you're not going to give up. Get the bearing. Get, yeah. Tilt the head, mate. Head back. Head tilt. Yeah. Continue. 
Good, good compressions, box. They're getting there. They're getting there. Rally, 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 rally. Rally, mate. Come on, mate. Come on. 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 Come is becoming less likely by the second. There's my patient, there's my patient. Fingers crossed, boys, come on. Paramedics fit an ECG machine to Oddbjerg, hoping to identify electrical activity in her heart. And then, out of nowhere, he said, oh, hey, boys, I think I'm getting a, a faint electrical activity there. Next minute. You know, we heard, we've got activity, there's a pulse come back. And I looked at Singles, was like, oh my God, like, we've got it back. Absolutely incredible. One of the paramedics told me that there's a 0.01% chance that someone will survive something like this. and. There it was, right in front of us. It was just this huge relief and singles and all were like, thank God. But, you know, that, that didn't help things as well because then the boys, unfortunately, across from us were like, you know, had their heads down and, and then I was like, oh, no. With their sister revived, family members turned to their brother-in-law. But after 30 minutes of CPR, paramedics call an end to the resuscitation. We're just like, how? Why can't we get this guy back? Like, you know, over the years we've had so many successful sort of resuscitations, and it's surreal having someone die at your hands. You know, it's our one job down here to, to get everyone home safe and out of the water and. You know, obviously, sometimes we do our best and it's not good enough, but it hurts a lot. Now breathing on her own, Oddbjerg is placed into an induced coma and prepared for transportation to hospital. It may be days before Oddbjerg's condition is fully known. Three days after the drowning, Lifeguards await news on the condition of 67-year-old Oddbjerg, the woman they resuscitated. I was just sitting in the tower watching the water, and we got a knock at the door, and she said, ah, uh, hi, uh, you rescued my sister? And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, and I was just, she was looking at me, and I, I just said, how, how is she? And she's like, this is her. <laughs> and the lady just stood there, and like, we just looked at each other for, I felt like for like 20 seconds, we just, I just looked at her, I was like, this can't be real, like, you should be dead. We, as soon as we saw each other, we just had this huge hug for about a minute and uh, there were tears. For me to see her with life in her body and life in her eyes, it was incredible. So this is from the sister, actually. Dear Trent, thank you again for saving my sister from drowning on Bondi Beach. The hard work you and your fellow lifeguards did for both Oddbjörg and our brother-in-law, Johnny, meant the world to us. I had the feeling of being on, in a roller coaster between deep sorrow and extreme happiness. Going home together with Oddbjörg, who shows no signs of injury at all, is the best gift ever. I would like you to know and also pass on to your fellow lifeguards that all of us who are present at Bondi are so grateful for your knowledge, capacity, endurance and hard work regarding both Johnny and my sister. Our sister, who lost her husband, asked me to thank you for trying as hard as you did to save Johnny's life. His coffin will come to Norway in a few days, so we are going together for his funeral. Please pass on our thanks to everybody involved. <laughs>